and welcome back. How are we welcome getting back. on? Lads, below me right now is a beast of a man. This lad is huge. Look at him. How you doing, man? It's Nick. Can't complain. Uh, thank you guys again for having me on. I am um, I'm doing pretty good. All things considered, I'm doing awesome. Yeah. Uh, we've been talking since July. So um, for anyone who's come to this channel since July, could you introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, so Nick Weary, I am the eighth ranked competitive eater in the world with Major League Eating. Um, hopefully those rankings get down again soon. Maybe I can jump up a couple notches based on some performances. But uh, yeah, ex-bodybuilder, uh, cargo shorts dad, and uh, competitive eater. Cargo shorts dad. I love it. <laughs> I love that. That's... <laughs> when I become a dad, I'm going to start calling myself that shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's what um that's what miki calls me she's uh my girlfriend is miki sudo the seven time reigning champion of the uh nathan S women's hot dog eating contest it's uh yeah so i have seven giant pink belts in my house none of which are mine but sometimes i parade around the house and like to pretend they are i played it uh honesty is the best policy is what they say <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah uh you know Time to catch up. We haven't talked in a while. Um, yeah. Last time we were talking, you both preparing for uh, was it the Nathan's hot dog contest? Yeah. Contest. Yep. And uh, yeah, and I think a couple of days later, I seen you guys in like news all over the shop. So, <laughs> what was that comp? What was that competition like, and the process of preparation for it? So the process, uh, I mean, the, the competition is always awesome. And honestly, this year was way different, obviously, because normally we're talking about thousands and thousands of people on the corner surfing Stillwell in Coney Island. Um, this year was in what was a secret location until the day of they disclosed it. Um, and obviously, it was a very limited field. Normally, there's about 40 competitors total between the men and the women. This year, there was 10 Um based on proximity, states that were closed off, ranking, so on and so forth. So um, initially, I actually wasn't on the invite list uh, to go, and I was a late substitute. So while most competitors had about three weeks, uh, two and a half, three weeks to get ready for Nathan's, um, you know, which is a crazy rush prep, I had about three days to get ready for the Nathan's hot dog eating contest. So um, luckily, I was able to put up a, a personal best and sneak into third place with 39 and a half. Miki was able to take home title number seven in a row with a personal best and the women's world record of 48 and a half in 10 minutes. So she kicked everyone's ass except for Chestnut who managed like 75. But, um, but yeah, no, it was, it was really cool just to be able to do it, to go to New York and compete um, and to be able to kind of remember like, there wasn't thousands of people standing in front of us, but there were still, you know, millions of people at home kind of watching on TV. And you kind of use that to, to motivate you when, um, when you're 10 pounds of uh, cased beef too, just deep. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I can't, I can't, as always, I cannot glaze over the fact you just <sighs> said I she ate 48 hot dogs. Yeah. She, um, um uh, Thomas, can you pull up a picture of Mickey? Um, hey, you got a second? Man, just look it up. Oh, she's here? She's here even better. She's tiny. <laughs> get her to pop in here for a second. And <laughs> see if we can get a brief appearance by the queen over Hello. here. Hello. Hi, Vicky. Oh, my God. How you doing? Hi. <laughs> How are time you? I see. Yeah, Congratulations on the uh, Nathans. Uh, yeah, it was a it was a good year to have a good year. The women's contest was televised for the first time ever, so it was great that I didn't. You know, there are some competitors who definitely slacked. You know, some people couldn't get ready in time without knowing that we were going to have a contest for sure. So it was really good that you know Nick and I were really, I don't know, well practiced and ready to go. Um, yeah. it's motivating when you're getting your ass kicked at home in practice. <laughs> So that yeah. kind of helped me to a, uh, a better performance and probably would have been on the table had I just been walking in in a normal circumstance. But. Yeah, it was really hard to practice with Nick. No, like, I almost felt like I was rubbing it in his face that I was competing that he wasn't. You know, I was putting him, he was putting himself through. Nobody wants to eat hot dogs like that for mm. fun. So just, 
I don't know. He kind of, he really took one for the team and ultimately paid off for him because he ended up competing. Uh, but yeah, it really helped. I don't know. I think it really worked to our advantage that we had each other. Yeah, some guys show their support with like Hallmark cards and flowers <laughs> and all that stuff. Some guys then pour hot dogs down their face just out of being a nice guy. <laughs> you know what? What else could you do? That's just match that right. I don't think you yeah. have that. You're not going to see that in the movie. No, <laughs> hell no, you're not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I was just saying there, like, how, how many hot dogs did she eat? 48, you said? Yeah, 48 and a half. In <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. You're combined. so small. Yeah, we had combined 88. Oh, uh, kind of scattered the couple's record. So 88 hot dogs combined in 10 minutes. Probably more than any couple should eat in their yeah. in their whole time together. Um, but yeah, it's um, so hopefully next year, you know, all things normalized. Maybe we could push that number to triple digits. And, uh, I don't see why not. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I felt great. Yeah, I think she's um, say it like it's so easy. Yeah, I think she probably got to hit mid fifties in the tank. That way, if she can hit like fifty five, I only have to hit forty five. We're at a hundo, so we good to go. I was gonna say straight up, I don't think I've actually ever eaten a hot dog. So like, Seriously? they don't they don't have them over here like yes, they do. over in America. Well, not others like. You been to Eddie Rockets? I haven't had one in Eddie Rockets. I just get <laughs> chi- I just get chicken. <laughs> They're not my thing. They're not my thing. Fair enough. They're not your thing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have to make a trip over here, and then we can put him through a hot dog practice. Perfect. So your first, your first hot dog, your first time eating hot dogs, like your time fashion, dunking into crystal light, the buttons. Bro, that sounds so terrifying, trying to you guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this sounds so intimidating. <laughs> um, definitely, actually, tonight, uh, right after... Saturday Night Live on NBC, they're doing uh, First Look TV. We, we filmed a segment last year with um, cool. the host is uh, Johnny Bananas, who was on like, uh, like Real World, yeah. I think, and all that. And it's on a reality show over here. So they're do- he tried a quickly timed hot dog run with uh, the two of us and uh, Badlands Chugs. Mm. And oh, not he's quoted as saying, he's like, I think something to the effect of like eating hot dogs quickly is much harder than I expected. Yeah. <laughs> like, if I had two hot dogs, and like, this is puny compared to you guys, I'm actually, I'm genuinely full. Like, <laughs> genuinely full. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> I'm genuinely full if I have two hot dogs. Sometimes I wish I was full after two hot dogs. It's, it's not always a gift. <laughs> it's like, do you guys get full during your competitions? Like, where's the breakup point where you think, you ever oh shit, oh, it's, like, it's like, oh shit, you're on like uh, hot dog three and you're like, oh fuck, then you go realize yeah. you got to get another 45 down. You know? If you're having an awful day and you realize that you're yeah. not feeling well just a few minutes into a contest, mm-hmm. I mean, it happens. Most mm-hmm. contests, there is a, there's a point with most, like some contests, they're just really like pretzels, for example, you can only get giant pretzels down so fast. So at the end of that contest, you're really not going to be full. You're probably just not going to want any more pretzels. Um, but there's usually a point in a contest where you're like, uh, okay, um, you start to feel the food, so to speak, taking up space. You really hope at that point, you hope you don't feel that. Or you hope at that point you hear like Sam Barclay, who's typically the MC, saying like two minutes or something like that. When you feel like that mm-hmm. and you hear Barclay's like, we are three minutes in, there are seven minutes remaining, you're like, mother of God. Well, oh, this is, I am in for a long day today. Um, yeah, there, there are definitely days that feel like a task. You yeah, know? that happened at Poutine and more recently that happened at Tamales. Just four uh-huh. minutes into a contest, I felt like. There's no way I can keep the speed up. But you also don't want to be that person who basically is leading the pack for eight and a half minutes and then has to watch somebody else, you know, just kind of crawl into first place because you have no more space. Yeah, you That's fart out. Yeah, because she's she eats, she has much more real estate than I have, so to speak. Like, she could fit a little bit more food. Um, so there's definitely been times in most of the hot dog practices that we did, I'll be beating her for the first few minutes like I'm quicker out of the gate and then all of a sudden it's just like a tortoise in the hair where I feel like I'm gonna die and she's just yeah. casually you know turning her head to the side eating 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 and I'm sitting like no come back I, I scare myself <laughs> and I frustrate myself when I watch it back like, I, I can't believe how slowly I eat 
but uh, yeah. you know the numbers work out for me in the end in the end yeah yeah basically what i would say is don't beat yourself up too much okay <laughs> everybody has their bad days and when you manage to get 48 down yet in under 10 minutes i think it's a pretty big accomplishment right <laughs> Where, where? I only eat 45 hot dogs. <laughs> this is when he picks himself up for not having, you know, the same amount of real estate or space or capacity. Like, you've got these iron bars, you know, stopping <laughs> your stomach from expanding. So maybe I yeah. wouldn't cry about it. You've got, like, these abs that are preventing you from eating 20 pounds. I don't know. Cry me a river. Mm. See, that's your problem, Nick. You're too rich. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't, yeah. It doesn't help, like, 12, 13 years of weight training that basically has told my core, hey, you better be stable or your spine's going to snap in half if you're trying to squat, you know, 500 pounds or something. So where most competitive eaters don't exactly look like I do, so they're not really fighting that same um, – con that constriction – so to speak, like I would say if you're very heavy, you typically have that constrictive property or if you were having like a background of like weight training, you're, there's going to be a little bit extra constriction. Yeah. Um, just what you said, like most, if not all competitive eaters do not look like you guys. Yeah. You guys are in top notch shape. Uh, no, no offense to the competitive eaters. Like, no, sorry, no. but uh, a lot of them are they're a bit of a chunk. Yeah, I mean, there's, there, it can be typically because you know, it's, it, it's like being an accountant. There's no reason to be shredded, you know, or jacked. Yeah. Or, I mean, we, it's just something we enjoy is exercising versus being a competitive eater. Um, it, it's, not, it's not a bodybuilding contest. So, like, yeah. if, it, if no. you're more of a kick-ass eater being in mediocre shape, then all the power to you. Yeah. Do you think being smaller has its advantages, though? Because I'm just thinking for you, Mickey, and I'm also thinking in the mind of, like, Matt Stoney, it actually works out in your favour that you guys are able to, like, I don't know. Probably. I mean, I can only speak for myself, but I do better when I'm lean and healthy or at my fight weight. Um, you know, when I feel like I could sprint around the block and not be winded, I am able to eat for 10 minutes without getting tired. I don't know if there's any sort of correlation there, but, uh, yeah. I, I think there's, to an extent, I wouldn't want to go in emaciated and, and, you know, collapsing. So it's not the thinner, the better. Just mm -hmm. a healthy, lean weight is optimal. Yeah, I've gone in overly tired. And, yeah, like, yeah. that happened at Nathan's this year. We're out of the gate. I was in a really good pace and just kind of farted out the last couple of minutes. And I was just physically exhausted. It's, it's people are like, oh, you're tired from eating? You go do it, okay? <laughs> like, you do it and tell me how just how easy it is, how much of a game this stuff is. Yeah. Um, cause I don't think somebody's going to be like, Oh, are you in that bad of shape? Yeah, that's it. The jig is up. I'm in that bad of shape. Like, no, it's just, I kind of, um, I, I depleted a little bit further than I should have and was just completely gassed at the end of those eight minutes. And my last couple of minutes are like watching the grass grow. Mm. Yeah. Um, what you were saying there, um, do you guys go in hungry or like what? Oh wait, uh, that's a stupid question. Do you fast? Um, like, like how do you long fast would you fast beforehand? That's that's what I meant. Mm. Yeah, we both kind of yeah. have different techniques, and everybody will be a little bit different. But um, if it's a what we call a capacity contest, so it's like poutine or chili or or hot dogs, where you know you're putting in a good amount of volume between the fluid and the solid food, then I'll typically be like 24 hours fasted from solid foods. I might have like some protein shakes yeah. or gator stuff uh -huh. like that. Um, stuff that's going to move through and then typically I may take something to make sure everybody moves along through the process so to speak um, but she'll typically get a little bit closer to the contest yeah. like she seems to just digest food a little bit faster but, yeah you know. I guess it all depends on what we're going to be eating I yeah. mean you don't want any of that track to be jammed up at any point whether that's yeah. in your Trick or a little bit further down. I mean, you're just putting yourself at, at a disadvantage. You would like to have all the juju, -doo, uh, <laughs> like so to speak, like to, to put it in a very scientific way. You do not want any juju. -doo. Um, yeah. You know, basically everybody needs to leave because even if you have a little bit there, and everyone's like, "Well, how much space would it really take up?" Well, you also don't want to have to go to the bathroom because you have 17 pounds of poutine sitting on top of it mm -hmm. because you don't have anywhere to go when you're on stage. So you'd rather not be stuck up there like, oh, gosh. 
<laughs> like there's there's a problem now because I have 17 pounds of pressure um, trying to push out whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the part we don't want to get to, you know, no. the effects of what 48 hot dogs have on the other end. Yeah. Yeah, I'm the, I feel like Good I'm, Lord. I'm the victim here. <laughs> Okay, so no, it's um, it's a job hazard. It, it just like yeah. anything else, you know. It's if you're a stunt man, you're gonna have a lot of bruises and probably some concussions. If you're a competitive eater, you're going to always have some like tums and antacids or fresh almond milk and probably some magnesium citrate in the house to make sure everybody leaves. You brought up stuntmen there. I just want to say I, I've been doing a bit of work recently with some stuntmen, uh, <laughs> and there was a guy two guys and they got set on fire six times in a row <laughs> to get the scene perfect <laughs> that's awesome like see they're, they're that is terrifying yeah like, you see it in movies you barely even notice it's like oh another guy went on fire this guy blew up this guy got shot in the head and then when you're there because he didn't warn anyone it was going to happen and then it just happened six times I, yeah, I mean, but I feel like you want to, like, those guys are living life. Because if something was to happen at work or when they're 80, if they're stunned until they're, like, 80, they're like, oh, what happened? Oh, he died of old age. No, what happened? He got lit on fire six times in a row. Like, that guy lived a fucking life. That guy <laughs> lived a serious life. Like, I want to, even if I live to be, like, 85, which probably didn't happen, but if it was to happen, I'm probably just going to tell her, like, shove me in an alligator tank or push me out of a shark cage or something because I don't want my obituary to be like snooze Magoo over here died of natural causes. I'm going to be like, he got ripped apart by alligators. People are like, that guy lived a kick-ass life. He was probably pretty excited. A short one too. But, fair play too. Yeah, I mean, but no, I'm going to wait till I'm old. You know, oh, plus, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> malleable and not moving very fast so like they're gonna rip you apart in seconds yeah when he turned 70 he trained for another six months and fought a bear yeah he's not yeah. around anymore or like i probably maybe like an ostrich or something like that like an ostrich they got that big claw they're pretty much a modern day raptor yeah. like what happened to them? Or a they're worse like, yeah or emu or something yeah. cool like that you see how giraffes attack their prey they literally stomp on it that oh. shit hurts I don't know. I think if you were killed by a giraffe, it seems like a pretty docile animal. Like, I'm sure it's it's probably a realistic thing, but what happened to him if you get killed by a giraffe? Like, he must have been a prick if a giraffe killed him. Yeah. He was such a nice creature. Yeah. But you'd think that, but then, like, all these things in the plains of Africa, like, they're fighting so hard to stay alive. That's the true. competition there is unreal. Yeah, so they're probably just going to, like, just out of spite for you, if you go too close to them, they're going to be, like, dead, kick you in the face, just so, for their yeah. own sake. Yeah, like, hippos <laughs> attacking you because they, don't, uh, like, they yes. don't like you for no reason. Yeah. yeah, hippos, you know a creature is an asshole if they will wind their tail in a windmill just to fling their shit all over the place. Like, you're just not a nice yeah. creature. <laughs> yeah. You suck. Yeah, or like the baby hippos, if it's a guy baby hippo, it'll just be swimming by and the dominant male will be just like, and you're dead now. Why? Because I said. Just because. because you're just dead now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I asked this before, but I just want to ask again, because I don't know if Mickey was here when I asked. Um, do you guys ever worry about like what your lifestyle, uh, how, how it could affect your health? I, I mean... You probably get this question a lot. But you guys are very fit. And... I, yeah, I mean, this year, obviously, we've taken an involuntary break. But I, I'd say, I mean, this is just, this is not the norm for us. I think people forget that we don't eat like this. We don't get to travel like this. We don't um, yeah. ask. Like, all of this is, the events are the, just snippets of our lives. It's not, you know, our regular diet. Yeah, yeah I don't know, it's it's what we see from like the content you guys make or what yeah, we see in the news or videos. If, so on. If, somebody, if somebody smoked a couple cigarettes once every ten days, I don't think people would. I don't. I don't condone it, but I don't think people would be like, "Aren't you scared about those two cigarettes you smoke once every ten to fifteen days?" As opposed to people sucking down packs and packs of cigarettes yeah. in a third pack every day, or they're two hundred fifty pounds overweight, and everyone's like, "Oh, that's probably fine." 
But it's, it's listen here. What what if it was like you smoked forty eight cigarettes in one go? Yeah, huh? I mean, that would be that would be a problem. That being said, I would still say you were better off than the person smoking a pack a day. No, you're right, yeah. No, I just yeah. wanted to say that to be cheeky. I don't. Uh, yeah, I don't condone the behavior by any yeah. means. But I would, you know, um, what we do, I would equate on some kind of level to um, to being an elite level athlete. You know, my but our practice is not close to as hard on the body as say a professional football player, baseball player, basketball player, soccer yeah. player, whatever. Um, but our active careers are typically not super duper long and it's very few and far between, but anything done at an elite level, anything is typically going to have some type of negative feedback because the investment that's going to be needed. So, well, I definitely don't condone the behavior. I would say like, you know, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I eat well nine out of 10 days. Um, you know, I, whatever, take a good amount of health supplements from my time at vitamin shop. Um, yeah. so while I wouldn't say I'm the picture of health by any stretch of the imagination. I could probably be like lighter and carry less muscle tissue and be in slightly better physical health. Um, I'm Is not anyone old. else here, this guy? Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I would say like, I'm not overly concerned about it because I also, it brings me so much like happiness to be able to do this with her. There's something to be said about mental health equating to physical health too. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. No, what were I we mean, talking about before if, here? If we were doing this on top of living really sedentary lifestyles mm -hmm. with shitty diets, then, you know, I would say then you're just exacerbating an already bad situation or a dangerous, precarious situation. But yeah. I, I think for the balance that, you know, the, the balanced lives that we lead um, in order to incorporate this, I, I'm not overly concerned. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. But yeah. Oh, it, it does. Like, I only ask because you guys are experts in this. Yeah, I'll just go to. Oh, sorry. sorry. Um, yeah, I was waiting for all your Yeah, no, I, I mean, yeah, it's, I wouldn't, again, I don't condone the behavior, but I think you, you could be doing far worse for yourself, probably. Yeah. I mean, I think maybe in 20 years I'll grow a third arm out of my chest or something like I that. I see in that study. Oh, yeah. Let's, we, let's hope not. People have contacted us about possibly being in a study to, to study, like, um, yeah. Basically, the, like your GI tract. And the argument like that. being that your body can only process so many calories. It can only deal with so much of, you know, the food that we consume in a short duration. Yeah. So, yeah, they actually wanted to put us in these controlled calorie, what is it? Like a, meta, like a metabolic war. Metabolic war. Study. So, basically, um, like they put the food in you, study your GI tract. And see basically what gets passed off as a yeah. waste. So, yeah, your body can only absorb so much of this. The rest is just excreted. Um, so the argument there would be that it's healthier for us to consume 48 hot dogs in one sitting as opposed to 48 hot dogs every single week or, or whatever. Right, like in seven sittings. Yeah, like, seven. Because the human body, in theory, is designed to kill something, eat as much of it as you can, and then move on for a handful of days. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So. Well, you know how that study goes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, no, that actually makes a bit of sense because you think back in the day with uh, Tuk Tuk and the boys, you yeah. know, if they take down a deer, even if there's 10 people there, if there's, like, they're not going to finish the deer. Right. Good luck. Uh, sort of maybe there's something to it, like <laughs> eating until they're just, they can't take any more and moving on. Yeah, exactly. So, like, I, I don't know. You know, I definitely, don't, I definitely don't think it's a good idea to eat 48 hot dogs at a time. But, I mean, um, yeah. people are probably doing worse things for money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, no, I'm not asking this, that question to annoy you guys. I'm no. asking because you guys are the experts in this. And if so, yeah. if any, anyone, anyone watching gets that misunderstanding out of their head. Yeah, no, it's, 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 no, we appreciate it because it's a, you know, it's, we do get questions similar to that or like, the gluttony question and all that stuff but yeah. it's 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 just kind of um it's a job hazard but it's mm. the course for us but look it's fun you got these 48 hot dogs that's <laughs> awesome um so oh what was it you told, you told me before um uh mickey you own a, a record for eating a certain kind of food uh, oh, what was that again a few know. pretty obscure records. Uh, so the hot dog being the most recent, those 48 and a half, 48 yeah. and a half hot dogs in 10 minutes. 
Uh, I broke the world ice cream eating record, and that's just over two gallons in six minutes. Um, yeah, that, that's uh, hard to, that's probably the most impressive in my mind. Um, eight and a half pounds of kimchi in eight minutes. I, you know say? I think yeah. it's eight minutes, and then uh, hot rice with hot, hot, dish. hot dish, which is a wild rice creamy casserole dish, uh, and that was. 14 pounds in I think also eight minutes yeah six or eight I, either way it's under 10 uh, a lot of food but yeah hot uh, dish, kimchi and hot dogs to be fair that mm -hmm. ice cream one I say I could, I could outdo you on that one you should have seen me about two days ago <laughs> I, would, no. I would be so impressed even if no, I'm no, never no 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 you don't want to see us do that because then it'll just turn to tears and sad movies like the notebook <laughs> yeah you eat an ice cream get a cry and like it hurts my head <laughs> Yeah. Oh, did you get a did you get a head freeze? What is that? Uh, brain freeze. freeze? Did you get a brain freeze from that? Not a brain freeze, but my core temperature dropped to the point that I was kind of concerned for myself. I had to go find hot water, hot coffee um, immediately afterwards because I was shivering. Yeah, yeah it, for every, and from what I understand, as long as the ice cream, the cold part doesn't touch the roof of your mouth, um, you could avoid brain freeze. Um, it was either that or the adrenaline because I, I didn't experience that. It was only until after the contest was over that I was extremely just uncomfortable. So if you guys need to kick ass in an ice cream in the contest, write this down. Take the spoon, flip it over. The ice cream goes against your tongue. The spoon goes closer to the roof of your mouth, but try not to touch the roof of your mouth. Put it towards the back and just swallow it, and you'll avoid that brain freeze. It's a cool party trick. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, don't, I don't chew ice cream anyway. No, but... I mean, I would if there was like Ben and Jerry's. Oh, yeah, no. So don't let it touch the top of your mouth, okay? No, you flip it over so like the spoon is facing down. Okay. Yeah. That goes in my super important file section. Yeah, no, okay. Yeah, thanks for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Are you kidding me? Well, no, no. no. Uh, that is definitely going to come in handy. <laughs> I don't well, know when that's going to come handy. But like... <laughs> in my life, that's going to be very useful. I'll use it to its full extent. I love you, mean you can eat like, more ice cream guys. than me, McAuliffe. It's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm actually lost as to what to say after that now. <laughs> you know, you've really impressed me with like the record you own. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, Nick. Uh, do you have any records in certain foods? I don't have any records in, in certain foods. For a while, I had the Pop-Tarts in one sitting record, but Chestnut came and killed that. So I uh, made 70 Pop-Tarts in one sitting. That was rough. It sounds um, ridiculous compared to some people on YouTube who claim that everything that they eat is a world record. Yeah. Like we I, compete against actual professionals, so our standards are a little bit different. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like, there's there's some thoughts. Like, I broke the bratwurst eating record last year in contest, but I was fortunate enough to be against uh, Jeff Esper in the same contest, who also decided to break it and beat me by half. Oh. Um, yeah. rough. No, but uh, <laughs> that that would have been a cool record to have. Um, she broke it too in the same contest. She ate thirty five, I ate thirty five and a half, and he ate thirty six. Yeah. Um, but other than that, no, uh, nothing notable yet, mm -hmm. you know, so we'll see, hopefully have more contests come around next year. Um, mm -hmm. There's, there's some within striking distance, I think, but we'll see. Yeah. Uh, do you think you've any like unofficial ones, like either of you? Oh God. Um, like what do you need, to, you probably need to verify. Probably cooking dough. Yeah. I That's would right? say that. I don't know if anyone's eaten as much cookie dough as I have in one sitting. Um, and that was just willingly, because I just love cookie dough. Um, <laughs> or birthday cake flavored items, if you really want to be bizarre. Like, I love birthday cake and fun fatty flavored shit. Um, so probably those two things, you know, I would, I would argue that, that those would bode really well for me. I, I think I hold the most, the record for the most euros eaten by pound. Yeah, six, 16 and a half pounds of euros. <laughs> euros in an euros. hour. Yeah. I don't think anybody's ever come close to that. Or maybe the most, <laughs> most debris ever created and all oh you can God. eat sushi. I just, want to go, I just want to go back to that euros thing. Are you talking what is about, that? What is that? Are, you, are you talking about the money? Like our currency? You were our eating our currency? No. Oh, yeah. 
gyros. There's a there's a contest called the uh, the Southside Six in uh, Bowling Green, Ohio, or a um, a food challenge, one of the largest ones in the country. Um, and she did that in big. Come here. They're asking about the, uh, the the gyro contest. Oh, gyro. Yeah, I know what that gyro. is. Okay. Gyro, it's a gyro, thing. Something like that. Yeah. So it was. Um, but no, no. Other than that, that was so. It's like it's it's supposed to be. Um, they only measure the meat, but I think it's advertised around twelve pounds typically. And so she went last September ish to do it while well, she's driving cross country. Um, and it ended up being right around 16 and a half pounds total when it came out because it all would be only measure the meat. And so six gigantic um, heroes or gyros or, or whatever, um, almost three pounds a shot. And so she did that in right around 40 minutes. She finished it and recovered in like tzatziki sauce and whatever, like that's, it's like volume wise, if you were to look at it, that looked like some of the most solid food I've ever seen a human being eat. Uh, but yeah, that was, and he was actually streaming it like live as she was eating it. That was pretty insane. Well, yeah. I actually, I had something similar for dinner today. <laughs> uh, it's the Turkish equivalent. It's what I had for dinner today. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank and I nearly know. died. I was getting in the spirit of talking to you guys. I was like, I bet I can finish the large one today. I was wrong. I was very wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, whenever I try to get anything out, well, like, especially like takeaway food, I'll be like, oh, I wonder how fast I'd be able to finish this shit. Uh, we've, yeah. had, we've had these conversations. We do. We have them a lot. It's funny. Uh, last time I was at his and Dara was there, we all got the, like, the same thing. We're like, I bet like if all three of us took on one, that both of you guys could beat us like <laughs> one by yourselves. I mean, probably, depending on what the food yeah. was. It, I mean, it depends. Yeah, it's, it's generally speaking. Fried chicken, it's chicken and batter. It's it's chips with pretty spicy chips. Got some, you know, chicken, uh, wings. chicken wings and stuff, you know? It's like... Yeah. Oh, chicken wings, totally, yeah. Like a professional against the regular person at chicken wings is... Um, they're typically going to bury them. Like, I think she... Uh, we did chicken wings twice last year. Um we did a combined like 440 in 10 minutes in Tahoe. And then um, in Buffalo, Buffalo, I had a rough day. I think I only did like 180 or something. And then she did 200 and maybe 210, 220, something like that. Yeah, so she, uh, she kicked my ass there in Buffalo. But um, those were tough too. Like I didn't, I had a much tougher time with those because in, in Tahoe, they just do flats. We're in wings, or in, in, excuse me, Buffalo, they do the, the drums and the flats. And I had a question for those, but she just kind of, she's very efficient at like taking, when she, she's always doing something. So when she's not necessarily eating a wing, she's like taking the meat off with her hands and like getting it yeah. down. Mm. Yeah, that, was, that one wasn't a pretty one for me. We shoot really well that weekend. Oh, it's fucking impressive. Just. <laughs> Um, so it's a rough day, man. I, I was talking to my, my girlfriend, and uh, I said, You told us like how many chicken nuggets you had before 223. Yeah. I, for, I, I forgot the number now, like now, but at the time I told her, and she's like, She could she could beat you, she thinks. She's, she's um, an avid chicken nugget lover. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't put it past her. They're they're tough, your mouth starts to get cut up after a while, and that's one of the tougher parts is, is just dealing with the redundancy of flavor of anything in that quantity. Um, yeah. and chicken nuggets, they're, uh, they start to become kind of abrasive, you know, when you're 200 deep. Yeah, you, you wouldn't think of that, like when you have your normal 20 piece. No, Or your no. six piece, even. And they don't get cold when you're eating 20 of them or 40 of them or something yeah, like that. Yeah, good point. Uh, when you eat 200, they start to lose a little bit of temperature. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> He's not McLovinous. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... During COVID, which is going kind of crazy in the States at the moment, you guys have been going pretty ham on the YouTube. Um, how's that been? Uh, it's been cool, you know. Um, she's, uh, she's, we like basically built the website and edits all the videos um, and has become, 
insanely efficient because even like part way through COVID, um, we had a we had like a technological problem with the uh, external hard drive that we had, and actually the laptop. She was editing on an older laptop, so we got a new laptop. Uh, we were able to recover some of the footage from the other external hard drive. She learned a completely new editing software, and basically she she literally self taught all this stuff, which is completely insane because like. I, she like watches these videos and self teaches this software and puts out these videos. And I got like buddies texting me like, Hey, who does your editing for you? I'm like, she does all that. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. insane. So, um, post June, anything you see, like I would say July or after is all in the new software. It's pretty insane. But, uh, we had a lot of fun making it like uh, the yeah. 10 pound sushi roll. I couldn't believe how well that came out. I um, love that video. That one was really cool. And she was kind of like the architect of that where um, putting like basically taping all of the uh, nori together and knowing how much rice and stuff. And like, I'm a huge fan of imitation crab and avocado and so make that giant California roll. Um, the bologna cannolis was just a fun video where that was literally her and I sitting at home saying, wondering whether it should be called a bologna or a bonoli, if it was a bologna cannoli and yeah. arguing, so we decided to make a video um we have a video dropping in the next few days which we've got to fly out to california and do a giant team pizza eating challenge um cool. the, wow. the the big texan which is like famous here um you know be a 72 ounce steak a baked potato a shrimp cocktail a dinner roll and a salad and she actually just decided to do two on her way across the country um yeah and just kind of makes it look casual, which is insane. She just put that video out. Um, that one came out really well, even though, again, there was a footage problem, but she was able to kind of fix the footage, so it came out really well. I, it's just been a lot of fun, honestly. Like, doing this stuff, I wouldn't want to do it um, just by myself, because I feel like nobody really cares, you know, about me eating and, and stuff like that. Um, so, but doing these videos, even like down to like filming them and, and her editing them and like picking up, it's uh it, it makes it a lot easier when you have like fun doing it you know so, yeah yeah pretty cool well what's that thing um uh good medical morning does thomas when they, they eat and they do like the show i'm up then yeah oh yeah it's it's kind of like that but you're making it too yeah yeah so like those are we, we occasionally we'll go like live because we actually have a subscription to um like this like a boxu box so it's like oh, uh, different snacks from Japan um, oh, wow. that they do this every month. So you, there's like different places that do it and, and they've been really efficient with the shipping even through the insanity of the world this year. And, um, so basically it'll be like seasonal snacks for what's going on over there. So we'll do like reviews live, YouTube lives where we do those and um, review some of those snacks. Or if we just find like a bunch of clearance rando snacks at like some like store, We'll do those. So those are fun to do and interact with people too. Um, you know, with the videos, it's nice because you can go back and kind of edit. And so if you have like mistaken profanity or something like that, you can you can do that. Um, but you guys of, like edit out profanity from your videos? Yeah, for the, yeah, because like YouTube is kind of um, picky with that type of stuff. Um, and usually, you know, we're not too too bad about it. We got I've gotten much better about it, I should say. Um, but I can assure everybody the editing, unlike some competitive eaters, is is not to make any food go away. It's strictly to enhance the quality of the video where there's been a handful of uh, of YouTube eaters that have um, their videos magically some of the food starts to disappear. So that is not why we edit the videos, I can assure you. Yeah. <clears throat> what was that one I used to watch? Epic Meal Time. Oh, did shit. you watch those guys? <laughs> I, 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 I think to, they did a lot of that. Yeah, like that was that was cool. Like, cause they they wouldn't even necessarily eat the whole thing. They would just edit it into making some giant bacon and like whiskey themed bacon strips and bacon something. strips and bacon strips. Yeah, so you know, they would have like Jack Daniels and bacon and anything. Yeah. But um, but yeah, no, they they did a lot of stuff. But there's a few people that um, you can all you can't always <laughs> tell, tell sometimes because it'll be. It'll be someone that um, typically doesn't compete in any contests, but they claim these mammoth YouTube eating records. And it's like, well, then if you could do that, you'd probably compete. 
So would you ever make a video like debunking it or um, not doing it? I mean, maybe. Uh, I think like, you should. It's You're a talented it's, guy. It's not necessarily my place to put somebody on blast as a person, you know. Um, but yeah, but it's, your, it's what you do. And what they're doing is making it less real than it is. Like, it just... That, that's kind of... Light. That's the issue. My problem isn't you editing your video into some piece, because I understand this is entertainment. My problem is you're devaluing what real eaters can do. Um, Look at man, do you want to send me the name Alex Tosin? <laughs> I'll do it for free. <laughs> you know, I'm, uh, I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> what the fuck are they going to do? Come to Ireland? We're on lockdown right now. <laughs> yeah. No, sorry, you're saying... <laughs> so, yeah, so it's just like I, that's that's irritating at times because like we know we can look at somebody's ability and just say like there's no way to do that yeah it's, yeah yeah it's like and, it's kind of would you find it insulting would you kind of say would you kind of look at it and say you know it's just kind of a mockery of the whole thing yeah yeah kind of like we know it's bullshit like it's so it's, it's just kind of irritating that like um you think you could just do that and you're doing it strictly for views, which I understand, like it, they're doing it to make money or they're doing it for, for a following. But at the same point, it's like there are people who work their ass off to be able to do something. Um, so for you just to do that, you're you're basically just saying shove it to the people that work hard. Like someone's not going to go um, whatever, just try to devalue what a professional athlete does by making some video or they might, but then it would be pretty obvious. Like if you could do all that. If you're like one of these YouTube kickers or something like that, or basketball players, if you were really as great as you say you are, you would be in the league. I, I get. I actually know exactly where you're coming from. Uh, I, I do archery at a pretty high level, and mm. there was this guy a few years back, and he claimed <coughs> to have reinvented archery. He, he said he went back and he read scriptures, like super old, like Ottoman texts uh, from Persia and stuff from Persia. Uh, yeah you know, stuff from when, like, Genghis Khan and the boys were around. Oh, Jesus. Uh, but in reality, he was doing what was called just, like, trick shots. That's, yeah. all, that's all he was doing. But um, he was claiming it to be, like, a reinvention of archery because he was able to shoot very fast. He had this certain, like, he was removing steps in the shot process. So it was the arrow was in your hand. So you didn't need, didn't need a quiver. So you, you remove the pawn back. It's already in your hand with the bow. So then yeah. you pull it, string, back. It was just one movement. But trick shotters have done this for ages. Um, it's not very accurate. It's too fast. You can't really aim. But he claims to have reinvented the sport. And if you were an archer, you, you nearly hunted the man down. But it, <laughs> the standard person saying this, they're like, whoa, this guy remade archery. And that's, yeah. what, that's what happened, which is what happened with like what you're talking about here the standard viewer doesn't realize what's going on but yeah. someone in the profession knows yeah. there's somebody in particular that that's kind of infamous for it that um that like actually has yeah again they're you know she she's got she's taken heat for it and yet people still kind of seem to give her credit and, and all that and it's just kind of um yeah, it's kind of annoying. I want, so, I want you to stay till the end of the podcast or after the podcast because I want to know who this is and I'm going to go watch your videos and just like yeah, com yeah. comment mean things. No. Uh, <laughs> no, no. Uh, no I'm messing. We I'm don't messing. do that. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, no, it's, uh, it's, all, it's all good. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Thomas, any questions? Um, yeah, Nick. You wrote something down at the start. I, I have loads of stuff to take down and we've covered one. But uh, that's not. <laughs> um, oh lord! How many how many calories would you have in a day, roughly? Would you th would you say? If I wasn't doing competitive eating, I'd probably take in about uh, thirty eight hundred to four thousand to maintain my weight. Uh, but because of the competitive eating and occasionally doing like um, you know practices and things like that, I take in closer to like three thousand a day because of the occasional caloric anarchy i have to kind of account for those big bumps so then my body composition doesn't get too far out of place but uh, it's obviously highly individualized if i knew i was never contest coming for a period of time then i'd probably take in closer or i do take in closer to like 3800 to maintain right around like 205 you should um there's just like video challenges they're really good of like uh people trying to get like 10k calories in them in like one day 
Yeah, that's yeah, that's not. A, I mean, considering it, Nathan's, I did about twelve thousand in ten minutes in hot dogs. Like, it's definitely doable. Hmm. Well, <laughs> I I don't think I'd be able. No, I, it's, it's what, what would I have I mean, to eat for the entire day? I mean, because you look at her forty-eight and a half hot dogs is for roughly fourteen thousand six hundred calories. You know, that's ten minutes. Yeah, not hmm. not that you're gonna want to eat anything later on in the day, but like these these you know 10k in a day or something like that it's like it is and that's not like just the most calorically dense food if you were eating cakes and pies or like especially like certain like pies or, or create like fattier foods it'd be a piece of cake a piece of cake for lack of a better term to uh to get like at least like let's say 15 to 20 but when people do it casually and you're eating 20 000, and they look fine and look happy at the end of the day you can that's a telltale sign it's another bullshit video because even with our appetite, I don't want to eat 20K in a day. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. And yeah. would you say your diet, is it strict when you're, when you're not training now and you're just going everyday life? Is your diet very strict or would you kind of be, let yourself be more lenient of like having different meals every day or would it be kind of the same? Um, it's really similar. Like her and I always have like boneless, candles, chicken breast, avocado, eggs, celery kale 30 calorie almond milk onions mushrooms that's kind of our base of what we have in the house um and then some fresh fruit like peaches or like i like pluots like the plum apricot crossbreeds um so we have a lot of that like basically a lot of stuff that you could pick or kill so to speak um but i mean day to day you know i also have the kids sometimes so it's um they always have snack you know some snacks in the house and they have a much probably more well-rounded diet than a lot of kids but um you know if there's pop tarts in the house i'll have those Kid cereals, I'm a big fan of, but I mean, but we are, oh, and um, honey bunches of oats with almonds, that one, not the honey one, um, and frosted. You like the charms guy? Lucky well, charms are they're, they're good, but occasionally I do more frosted shredded wheat and honey bunches of oats. And there's a cereal called Blueberry Morning. And I'm a huge fan of. Um, those are probably the three. So or oatmeal, do a fair amount of that. So I guess what most people would consider strict, but it's not the same thing every single day. Um, oh, and paste. She would call it my paste that I have for breakfast, which is like protein powder and peanut butter and water just mixed into a paste um, just because it's quick and easy and I can just hammer it down and leave um, for work. But I mean, I have some flex. It's not like when I was lifting for contests and, um, and it was like meal one is this and it's all weighed to the gram um, because I now at this point too, I've been doing this for let's say 14 years measuring my food. I can eyeball things incredibly close, uh, and I have more life balance now than when I was competing, and it becomes just almost like a controlled, messed up way of eating. So, yeah, it's yeah. strict without being insane, I guess. Mm. And um, yeah. have you- I'm actually surprised how many calories you need in a day. Uh, <laughs> how, how much do you weigh? Like, I'm at, I'm like 205 pounds, so. But it's surprising. Also, I feed all day for work. I, I, I train probably six days a week. And I'm, I'm literally standing and walking all day at work, too. So, so you're a person with an average job, more of a desk job, um, that was, let's say, built like me, would probably be closer to like 3,400 or 3,200. Yeah. Mm. So you're in the gym six days a week? Give or take, depending on the week. You know, some days, a couple of days less, or some weeks, a couple of days less. But usually never seven. Um, I'll be active on the seventh day. Like today, we went to the park and the kids ran around and all that stuff. But like, I um, there's no real reason necessarily for anybody to be in the gym seven days a week. Hmm. And how long would you be in the gym like every day? Would it be for a couple, couple hours, me man. About an hour. You know, like yeah. if you're bullshitting and farting around, you might need a whole bunch more time. Like, I'm pretty social when I'm in there. I'll talk to her. And then people will come up and inevitably talk to me. But that's why I like Beats headphones. Cause it's kind of like, this is, I'm at work right now. Like, I'm not going to be rude to you. I'll be polite. So I'm not going to just like, Bleh, if you walk up to me, cause I'm not an asshole. But at the same point, it's like, I'm in here to train because I have a kind of a tight schedule. So if you don't mind, I would like to get that done. Mm. Yeah, no, I understand that. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I guess what you do with your spare time is really important to you. Yeah, kind of, because it's like I don't have a ton of spare time, you know, like, because I'm, I'm the general manager of a gym, so, like, I'm, I'm, even when I'm not at work, I'm answering emails or handling issues from outside of that, or I'm doing uh, diets and training programs for uh, other clients, um, or 
filming YouTube stuff or I just want to spend time with her, you know? So like the more time I could spend with her because I have such a tight work schedule and then I, we go to the gym, it's like, I don't have a lot of time to talk about how silly the debate was and all that stuff with random guy at the gym. That, that is a big thing. People have too much time. Yeah. Yeah. People. Yeah. They have too much time for bullshit. And then, but to be like, Oh, I don't have time to go. I'm canceling my gym membership because I don't have time to go to the gym. Did you see the last episode of Keeping Up with the Who Gives a Shit? Like, yeah. <laughs> there you go. No, right. you, you got a great point. Um, actually, I haven't even gone back to my own gym because because of COVID. Uh, right. And like, I, I've messaged like three times now. Hey, is my membership still valid? Like, did you pause it during COVID? And yeah. then nothing. <sighs> So, I mean, it's, it's in teach their own. I'm not, if you don't want to go to the gym because you'd rather watch TV, that's fine. I'm not judging you. But I mean, I think, I think some people, um, they don't necessarily, they don't prioritize their time in to get to their goals, which is again, okay. I'm not judging you. They prioritize their time for what they see as a priority, which may be TV, that may be um, yoga, that may be hiking, that may be whatever. Um, so do you, but don't be upset if you're not, aiming that arrow in the direction you want to go. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't actually know you worked in a gym. Yeah. But uh, do you think that fat shaming works? No. Um, no. For, Even for on a, a very, personal level? For a very small percentage of the population, I think it does because they work on negative biofeedback. Um, yeah. That being said, I think people love positive feedback. So the only reason that feedback is where it's the cause of acti activity and then you gave immediate ne uh, or negative feedback and immediate positive. But I don't think negative feedback even works because even in an athletic level, when your coach is like, you lazy piece of shit, you know, do more, do more. It's you're doing more because what you want is him to tell you, hey, you kicked ass today. You're not doing more because he's telling you you're a lazy piece of shit. You're doing more because you want him to stop telling you you're a lazy piece of shit. Yeah. So um i i don't think i don't condone fat shaming i don't can but that I mean, this could go on forever this could literally be a whole other podcast that i'd love to do with you guys um that being said i also don't believe in health at any size uh medical doctors would agree that is almost not a thing health of any size um but i don't but i think everyone should love themselves you should not hate yourself you should oh, yeah. love no yourself. seriously you don't, you don't need to accept like self-care self-love body acceptance um, and even body positivity is incredibly, incredibly important, male, female, otherwise, because I think a much bigger problem than fat shaming or even obesity is anxiety, depression, uh, mental health. Yeah. And if, if you can address those things, I think the other parts have a tendency to fall into place most of the time. Yeah. Um, I, I actually brought it up because um, I've heard other podcasters say it before that on a personal level, it helps them. Uh, like if, if they look in the mirror and they're not happy with how they look, that going to the gym, it's just the best thing they can do, do for themselves. Sure, so sure. Like, you, like you said, for a small percentage of people that works, but for the yeah. majority in your experience, Tyson. doesn't work. Mike Tyson said that to himself. Right? Yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah. It was Tyson, he said he looked himself in the mirror one day and he kept like insulting the shit out of himself and it made him get back out there and want to start boxing again, like. He went from like st just stoner don't Mike Tyson with the beard terrible. to like back to like the beast. Yeah, I don't think it's sustainable over time because I think what he's going to work on now that he's back in the gym is positive feedback. Mm -hmm. um, but I think but he, had, might, he had to get there from the negative. I think that, that might be the initial kick in the ass. But Mike Tyson, I also don't think an elite level athlete works in the same um, – brainwave or like wavelength as a normal person either no, by any yeah. no no that guy is out of his mind that guy is, about, is pure madness oh he is. yes he is how much would you pay how much would you take to get a slap from him um i mean like a close fist punch i do it for probably 50k yeah. you got the bar set high man yeah man <laughs> 5k this man can drop kick me Oh, 260 pounds of them. Yeah, uh, Roy Jones Jr. is taking a pretty... Are my, are my medical bills covered? Because then I do it for a little less. 
Sure. <laughs> I think we got free healthcare here, so. There you go. Or two, two degree. I'll over there and do it over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, smart man. Smart man. <laughs> yeah. No, mm. I, I, I like that, that thing you said. I, I really love it. You don't have time to complain about these things. Uh, yeah. I feel like with COVID, we're all sitting at home. We're doing nothing. We're starting podcasts. And we're focusing on the negative things. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and like, I don't know if you're on Twitter, but you see a lot there. Uh, <laughs> it's just something awful there. But, you know, I, I feel like when it's all over, we're going to think everything's so positive again. Like, I, I went on a walk with my mom today. I hadn't done it in ages. And I was like, Jesus, life isn't too bad. <laughs> right. No, um, but I, 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 I'm normally outdoors. I've been inside. It's borderline depressing. Yeah, yeah I'll t- totally. I think it's, yeah, it's, it's a huge thing that, that um, probably the one, one great thing that might come of this is more open speech about mental health and the importance of, um, the importance of being open about speaking about it. And even some of the, the free resources um, that have come about for people to call and hotlines things like that, whether that be for addiction, anxiety, um, just depression in general. Um, I think that part has been has been wonderful, at least to try to help that so that going forward and things normalize, maybe we can bring some of those numbers down. Yeah, um, we we did a podcast with uh, Just Man Up uh, Social. Mm-hmm. It's, it's another podcaster in Ireland, and he, he talks about mainly men's mental health. Um, he's got threats because he doesn't deal with specifically females' uh, mental health. He just deals with spe- spe- uh, specifically men, but he says yeah. it's it's for everyone. Because um, cool. men, men in Ireland don't really talk about it. Our suicide rate is astronomically higher than women in Ireland. Yeah. Uh, so he he made this this thing to talk about it, and uh, you know it it is a thing us guys don't talk about. Uh, I love it. You're this Jack dude. You think he wouldn't be talking about something like that or how important mental health is but here you are she's um yeah the, that's one thing i will um most definitely say um that you know miki has done for me is she brings me back she brings me back to a level to where um she's ma- she's made me better in every sense you know as, as a man and as a father yeah at the table that's what people will talk about they'll see numbers go up or they'll see my physique uh, and obviously all those things on the surface. Um, But what she's made me really uh, realize is she's taught me more patience and kindness and more things like that to her. Like admittedly, since she came into, to my life, I'm a, I'm a more patient father. I'm more patient with people. I'm um, yeah. So I'm, I'm genuinely appreciative about how my outlook has changed because I've been, I've never been completely closed off to those things, but basically she's, she's given me that balance to where it's like, all right, I can talk about it. It's okay every once in a while to come home and be like, I just need to put my head down and, and, you know, talk about how I feel. I'm still not great at it. I'll yeah. never be making it a great communicator, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get much, much better at that and learn more about it. So. Yeah. You're doing your best. Like that, that's, that's all we can do. Like, mm. Mm. It's good to talk about it. This just got really deep. This podcast just got really deep. <laughs> this is like the, the second podcast we've done in a week now where we've just gotten super fucking deep as well. It just keeps it's happening. It's happened with Paul Rosberry too. Yeah, with a comedian, no, nonetheless. You know, a guy we're supposed yeah. to have a laugh with. We started talking about the universe. <laughs> yeah, they got super sad. We're like, Paul, Paul, say something funny. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, no. so this- happens when you invite bodybuilders competitive even comedians see if you invite like a, a psychotherapist or somebody like that they're just going to rip fart jokes for like an hour so like you'll be good to go you won't get a deep conversation at all actually our video with a psychotherapist is our best video really <laughs> yeah very good uh yeah we 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 talked about like the use of cbd and uh right. psilocybin in treating certain mental illnesses like nice. PTSD for psilocybin and then anxiety and depression for CBD. So All right. yeah. people love that apparently. Nice. But yeah, mm-hmm. anyway, Nick, it's been a pleasure. It is yep. uh, two o'clock in the morning here. We are wrecked. All right, yeah, no, get some sleep. We've been working guys. since about two o'clock. 
Yeah, no, no, I got to bounce anyway. So um, we'll be in touch again, I'm sure. We'll, uh, we'll yeah. touch base with some more topics or whatever, but just hit me up anytime. I appreciate you guys having me on. Yeah, we'd love to have you on again to talk about uh, your work in the gym because you deal with people who have a variety of issues, uh, both, like, as you said, uh, mental and then physical, and yeah. how to work on those. So, work with them, man. I'd love to. Until then, uh, if people want to check you out, where can they find you? TheHungryCouple.com. All the social media links for Miki and myself are all on there. So, TheHungryCouple.com is now the hub for all things um, couple stomach centric. There you go. If you want to check them out, you know where to find them. Thanks everyone for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell your grandma about the podcast and take it handy. It looks and... nice.